And now we are talking about the second part of the selection. So selection separated into the lexo selection and then later on that is the selection for crossover. It means that after we select the end pop, uh, I mean the end kip, the upper chromosome, the upper part of the chromosome, and then so they will act as the parents and then so we are going to choose some of them to perform the crossover that is right here and for mutation as well. Yeah, so that means now the selection that is mainly for these two operations. Uh, when we look at this selection for crossover and then so we have four apodrys actually if you're looking at the literature, we have more than these four. So the first one that is pairing from top to bottom, and the next one, random pairing. And then the third one, that is the weighted random pairing. We call this is the woodland wheel costing, uh, um, <coughs> costing as well. And then so we have rank weighting, course weighting, and then the next one, that is the tournament selection. And now that is the purpose that is summarized by this line. We are going to determine who they are going to reproduce of Spain. That is who they are acting as the parent. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now take a look at this um, statement. The selection each time we are going to choose two chromosomes because we are going to choose two chromosomes from the n kipped population so that we are going to produce two new offsprings. That means when we look at the, the same example, this one, the first four, the first four, that is the n kipped We have these four chromosomes. They are, we are going to choose, we are going to choose two of them. For example, this one, this one, and then so say A1, A2, um, I'm going to use C1, C2 here yeah, because they are chromosome C1, C2, C3, C4, for example. And then I'm going to pick uh, C1, C3. They are going to perform, uh, they are going to reproduce offspring. They are going to have offspring one, offspring two. The purpose of these offspring, they are going to replace uh, they are going to replace these lower four chromosomes for example this one will be all offspring one this will be offspring two in total we need to have four yeah so this one just produce two and then so we are going to pick another two chromosome yeah say c2 c3 again we are going to have offspring three offspring four this one will be of spring three, of spring four. In the middle, how do we produce this of spring? It involves the crossover or the mating or the as well as the mutation. I'm going to introduce that later. But now I'm going to focus on these four approaches. How to pick these guys as parents? Yeah. Okay. Uh, now the first approach that is pairing from top to bottom it means that after we rank the population yeah we only focus on these four pairing from top to bottom it means that the first pair of parent that would be c1 and c2 and then c1 and c2 they are going to produce offspring these two pairs this pair of offspring will put it will, will put it in the lower four yeah we'll put it in um, the lower part and then if we still need more and then so we are going to pick another pair so from top to bottom so that we are going to produce sufficient number of offspring to fill up the bottom part of this population one thing we have to take note is that when we choose the population size that is n pop this population size will not change yeah so that means if we are going to choose n pop that is eight, no matter what, we are going to generate a sufficient number of offspring so that we are going to fill up the population so that it makes the population to be eight. Yeah. Okay. And now, the property of using this pairing from top to bottom approach that is very simple and easy to implement. Yeah. 
So, but the thing is that、uh, we only pair those parents good with good, mediocre with mediocre, bad with bad. Yeah, so that、uh, we may not introduce a lot of diversity to the population in the offspring right here. Yeah, so we can have some other approaches to improve the diversity, so that、uh, we can we we can have some more adjustment on the exploitation and exploration properties. The next one, that is, we are going to do the random pairing. Random pairing. According to name, yeah, just the name just tell us that we are going to randomly pick some of the chromosome right here. That is what I have done here. I randomly pick C one, C three, and then so put it right here, generate offspring. When we require more pairs, and then I randomly pick some of them, put it right here, C two, C three to generate next pair of offspring. And now that is each chromosome right here will have the E code. Chance to be selected as parent, yeah. So, because sometimes we can put put we can pick the very good. Sometimes we can pick the very bad right here, yeah. So we can improve or introduce the diversity of the po population, yeah. So that everyone has a chance to reproduce. Now, this is the third method. The third method that is about. The weighted random pairing we call this is the Wooden Wheel weighting because、uh, it is the chance, the chance of the co the chromosome to be selected that is somewhat depend on their cost. Yeah, so we will use we are going to calculate the probability of each chromosome to be selected. Yeah, and then、uh, also. The property is that the we would like to have the characteristic that the lowest cost will have a larger probability to be selected. The chromosome with higher cost will have the lower probability to be selected. That means when we talk about lower cost, because we are doing the minimization, lower cost it means it means the quality. Of the solution is better. That means we would like to implement the survival of fitness. The better quality of the solution will have a better chance to be selected as parent to reproduce. The less, um, um, I mean, um, those chromosome that is not in a good quality will have a lower chance to reproduce. Yeah. So let's take a look at the wank. Waiting as well as the course waiting. The first one, we talk about the rank waiting, and then so we need to have an equation to calculate the probability to be selected. For example, just stick to the same example. Remember that this is the n pop, that is eight, because we choose the selection weight to be fifty percent, so that. Or zero point five, so that the end cap that is four, the lower four, we are going to discard and replace. So, in this pool, and、uh, the size that is four, yeah. Okay. Anyway, we already ranked population. The bad, the best solution that is at the top, the worst solution that is at the bottom. So now we are going to apply this equation, and then so before I apply this equation, we are going to lumber this equation to be. One, two, three, four, and then so, and that is this number right here. I'm going to use the number here. N kept, that is four for this example. So we are going to have four minus n plus one. This one, just the sum of all n right here. So that is one plus two plus three plus four. Because n that is from one to n kept, yeah. So we just sum up all this number right here, which equals ten. And now, this is p one. That means n that is one. So we have four minus one plus one divided by ten. That's why the probability probability of this chromosome to be selected that is forty percent. And then, when we talk about this one. Now that is p two, four minus n, n. Now that is two. So we have four mi four minus two 
minus 1 divided by 10, that is 0 0.3. Follow the same equation, we come up with this probability. Yeah, so that means after we rank the population, after we rank the n kept population, we will come up with this probability, no matter what cost this chromosome that uh, to be. Yeah, and now this column. That is the accumulated probability. Yeah. So we in the first row we just simply put 0 0.4 right here and then this 0 0.3 0 0.4 plus 0 0.3. That is the accumulated probability from the chop. Yeah. So this makes seven, 0 0.7. And this one 0 0.9, that is 0 0.4 plus 0 0.3 plus 0 0.2. So it give you 0 0.9. The idea that is, uh, we we just simply use the same logic to come up with this one. Yeah, the last one it must be one because um, the because the sum of the probability it must be one. Yeah. And now why? How do we use the last column? That is, we are going to draw a line right here from zero to one. This line, we are going to break it down into four segments. Each segment, the length, that is according to Pn. So Pn 0 0.4, yeah? so it represents chromosome 1. 0 0.3, the next one, it represents chromosome 2. The next one, 0 0.2, that is chromosome 3. The last one, 0 0.1. So from 0 to 0 0.4, that is 0 0.4. From 0 to 0 0.7, that is this one, 0 0.9 and so on. And now, how do we use this rank rating to select parents or to select chromosome as parent? We are going to generate a random number in the range of 0 to 1. Now, in order to select the first parent, we are going to generate a number. For example, the random number generated that is 0 0.2. It is in the range, for example, 0 0.2, that is right here. We are going to pick chromosome 1. Next, because we require two chromosomes to act as parent to generate two new offspring, we are going to generate another random number, for example, this time, that is 0 0.82, that is somewhere right here. It means that we are going to pick the chromosome here. Yeah. So. This is the way for us to select the chromosome according to the probability. Yeah, according to the probability, we calculate right here. Yeah, okay. So this is the rank rating, the probability to be chosen according to their rank. Yeah, okay. Let's take a look at the property of this rank rating. It is problem independent. What I mean that is, it is problem let. It is less problem independent, but it still depends on on the cost. Yeah. So when I say it is problem independent, it means that their cost after we rank their position and then their cost does not affect their probability. That means in the next iteration, if this chromosome, no matter how good um, it is, for example, this one could be minus ten thousand. And then this one we keep the same, and that the probability still to be zero point four. Yeah, no matter how good this probability it is. Yeah, uh, sorry, how good this cost it is. So this is a kind of problem independent or less problem independent. And uh, small population will have a high probability to select the same chromosome. For example, when you look at these four chromosomes, and then uh, the first chromosome has. 40% to be chosen. That means when you are going to generate uh, another random number, there will be a chance that you are going to choose to chromosome 1 again. So the two parents will be chromosome 1. In that case, it really depends on whether you accept that or not. Yeah. So if, if it is just one iteration, two chromosomes, they are the same, it will produce the same offspring. But in the long run, it may not be. Um, it may not be each time you're going to choose the same chromosome. So you can't, um, that means you can 
either accept two chromosomes to be the same as the parent or you can just simply that you do not accept that if they are to be the same you are going to randomly generate another random number so that the second chromosome it is the not different um, it is not the same as the first chosen um, chromosome yeah so you have two unit parents to support the next stage to produce the offspring uh, now another point that is after we calculate this probability yeah we do not need to compute the probability pn again yeah because now it is cost independent it just depends on the rank that means the highest the rank and then to the higher the probability but this probability we do not need to compute that again so this is less computationally expensive we can compare this method with another weighting method that is the cost weighting i'm going to talk about 3.2 that is the cost weighting it is a problem dependent um, selection method now before um before we are going to apply this method we are going to do normalization now, this normalization that is to make sure that all the normalized course will be in the same sign so that when we calculate the probability it will not cause any concern for example divided by zero yeah and let's take a look at this example we choose n keep to be four and pop to be eight because this is just the same example as we used before and now i just list all the chromosomes right here this is the original population i just simply copy the first four in the n keep pool into this table and then to, now i just label that to be this is c1 c2 c3 c4 and then the next one would be c5 in terms of n kept the next chromosome the cost that is c n kept plus one and now we are going to normalize the cost to be c n that is depends on the n value that is it just means that we're talking about these chromosome minus c n kept plus one that is this one in this example so when we talk about n that is one that is capital letter one that is lowercase one minus c5 so c1 that is minus 13,000 something that is this number and then c5 that is minus 12,000 something all of the cost right here that is c5 so they have the same value and then this column right here that is the cost right here so that we are we come up with the normal normalized cost capital letter c and because in some cases this number could be minus or positive yeah positive or negative yeah for this one it happens to be all negative but uh, if they have different size different side positive or negative if we do not do the normalization and then so uh, some of these number they may not have the same size some of them they have they may be positive some of them they may be negative and then so uh, when we apply this probability equation the lower part the denominator it may be possible to be zero or it equals the sum of this pn not to be one but anyway after we do the normalization right here we are going to compute the probability using this equation yeah okay and now p1 that means when n that is one we are talking about this chromosome and then so c n after we i mean the uppercase n the f after normalization that is minus 13,080 that is this number the denominator that is the sum of all this value the sum of all this column so we come up with this value and then do the calculation this is the probability p1 that is the probability of this chromosome to be chosen and then so we are going to use the same equation but move on to 
the next number to calculate P2. Right here, P3, P4, we are going to do the same thing, that is to accumulate the probability. This one, because that is just 0 0.575 plus 0 0.205. It gives you this number, and then three number together, it gives you this number. All PNs together, it gives you one. We are going to draw the probability line right here, starting from 0 to 1. And then according to the accumulated probability, from 0 to 0 0.575, this range, that is the probability that that is the chromosome one to be chosen and then the next one from 0575 to 0780 that is 0 0.25 that is the probability that chromosome two to be chosen and then the third one the fourth one draw a line right here now if we would like to draw or to pick some chromosomes according to this probability what we are going to do is just to generate a random number in the range of 0 to 1 0 0.27 it is somewhere right here for example and then so that means we are going to choose chromosome 1 to be the first parent and then generate another random number for example this is 0 0.65 that is something right here and then we are going to choose chromosome 2 According to this probability, you can just find out that the better the quality of the chromosome, it will have a higher chance to be chosen. Yeah. So this this guy has 57.5% to be chosen, and this guy only has 10.9% to be chosen. Yeah. Okay. The uh, this is the course weighting section method. Now. Take a look at the property. This this time that is cost function dependent. Each time we are going to calculate the probability according to their cost. That means different cost, different distribution, it will affect the probability of each chromosome. Yeah. So that means if all the chromosomes they are more of they are more or less the same quality, and then uh, this probability will be more or less the same. They may have for some equal chance to be chosen. But if there's one chromosome, it has a very good quality, and then so uh, which will have a very large probability to be chosen as the parent. Yeah. Okay. So this is what I just mentioned. And then um I mentioned this point one chromosome that is very good it has a very good chance to be chosen if the co population that is evenly distributed all chromosome will have equal chance to be uh, to be selected and then this one each time we have to ca we calculate the probability so it is computational expensive when i talk about the generation sometimes i use generation sometimes i use iteration we actually i'm talking about the same thing yeah Okay, a remark for normalization right here. We are going to use this equation for normalization, but actually, we can use a general form that is Zn, that is a times Zn, lowercase Zn plus b. Again, when we talk about the lowercase Zn, that is the cost before normalization, that is in this column. Yeah, okay, so a and b they are some scalar some constant for example to be chosen yeah and uh, it can be constant or function upon your design yeah but anyway this is a more general form and also this is not the only form for doing the normalization we can have some uh, different form to do the normalization in our example that is this one yeah that is this one we choose a to be 1 and b to be minus c and k plus 1. So this is the normalization function we use. And now I'm going to move on to the next selection method, that is the Tolman selection method. 
So this example just show you what we are going to do, which is described by this statement. That is, we are going to randomly choose a small subset of chromosome from the end kept and then pick the one with the smallest cost for minimization problem. For example, end kept that is four. I'm going to pick three chromosome. Yeah, you can pick any number, but uh, in general, we are going to just pick two or three. So I'm going to pick the chromosome one, three, four randomly. And then so the winner, that is chromosome one. It is because among one, three, four, one, three, four, this guy has the smallest cost. So the winner is that is chromosome one. It means that I'm going to use chromosome one to be the first parent. And then I still need another one to form a pair of parents to produce two offspring. And now I'm going to pick another three chromosome. For example, two, three, four. Among them, chromosome two has the lowest cost. So I'm going to pick chromosome two as the second parent. Now I'm going to have chromosome one and chromosome two to be the, the pair of parents. And then they're going to... Um, we produce the offspring yeah so some remark if the same co i mean if the same chromosome is chosen to be parent one and parent two actually we can we can apply different method to avoid this for example if they are the same and then so say i'm going to choose uh say this is one three four and then this one that is one three four again and then so now we we just simply in the second parent we choose one again in that case maybe we are, we are going to randomly pick another three again so that um so that the chosen chromosome will not be the chromosome one yeah okay the property this is problem independent as well because uh, the when we choose this chromosome to be the candidate in this pool we do not consider their cost yeah so it works best for large population because if we are going to have a large population in the end kept and then so the duplication should be less. That means we do not have a higher chance to choose the same chromosome as the parent. Yeah, And also you will just find out that when we talk about a large population, this method is less computationally expensive because we do not need to do the normalization we do not need to calculate the probability we just simply randomly chose them and compare their cost yeah and now we still this method still satisfy the fitness uh, the survival of the fitness because after we randomly choose the chromosome and then the good quality one will stay and then the next two, actually, we are going to discuss that. Yeah, so this is the good thing about this tournament selection.